Do you know what's the difference between look development and color grading? They sound very similar, but these two stages play unique roles in shaping the visual feel of your project. Look development is all about establishing the aesthetic style before you even start the shooting. During this phase, you are deciding the mood, color palette and feel of your project. Think of it as like creating a visual blueprint. You might collaborate with the director or cinematographer to define whether the project will feel warm, cool, vibrant or muted. It's where you develop custom LUTs or filters and run tests to lock in the look that you want. Color grading, on the other hand, happens in post-production. Here you are fine-tuning every shot to match that blueprint. It starts with basic corrections like adjusting exposure and white balance. Then you apply the look you created earlier and match scenes for consistency. So in short, look development is about setting the vision and color grading is about executing and perfecting that vision in the final footage. Together, they are what makes your visuals really stand out. So in today's video, I want to show you some tools you can use for look development. Let's jump into DaVinci and get started quickly. So on my timeline, I have a variety of footage. Some are stock clips, some are Sony footage that I shot myself, and others are Ari Raw test shots downloaded directly from Ari's website. Each of these has a different color space. I intentionally chose footage with different color spaces because in your project, not all clips may have been shot with the same camera. You might need to match footage from different cameras, but the look we are going to create should work across various color spaces. And we can easily achieve this through color management. First, we need to convert all footage to Rec. 709 color space. For stock footage, we don't need to change anything because they are already in Rec. 709. For Sony footage, I'm using a CST at the clip level to convert from SLOG 3 to Rec. 709. Similarly, for ARRI footage, I'm converting from ARRI log C4 to Rec. 709. Also, in the project settings, my timeline color space is set to Rec. 709 as well. Okay, now we want the look we are going to create to apply uniformly to all our clips. For that, we need to work on the timeline level. Any changes we make here will affect all the clips in our timeline. Let's start by adding a few notes. First, I want to talk about a tool that's not often mentioned, the RGB mixer. I think it's a quite useful tool for creating unique looks. At first glance, it shows three channels, red, green and blue. The RGB mixer allows you to fine-tune the color balance, tone and contrast of your footage by blending the red, green and blue channels. It lets you control how much influence each channel has on the others. You can also adjust the overall saturation. For instance, let's set all channels to 1.5. You will notice the saturation increases. When we look at each channel separately, their default value is set to 1. If you make changes, the total value should always remain 1 to maintain balance. For example, let's reduce the red in the red channel to 0.8 and adjust green to 0.1 and blue to 0.1. This keeps the total at 1. This is before and this is after. With this, we reduce the red contribution in the red channel slightly while adding a bit of green and blue. Let's reset this. You will also notice a small icon next to each channel which lets you make auto adjustments. For instance, reducing blue in the blue channel will automatically adjust the other two colors, keeping the total value at 1. Let's make some small adjustments with the RGB mixer and move on. For the second note, I will start with the Curves tool. Later, we are going to look at other menus within the Curves panel. By the way, we can also check how the RGB mixer is affecting the other clips. Okay. They seem fine. Let's continue. Let's say we want to add a green tint to the highlights. So pre-planning your adjustments is key in look development. Knowing what you want in advance will make it easier to choose the right tools. First, I enable editable splines from the three dots in the top right corner of the curves panel. Then I unlink the color channels. I select the green channel and pull it slightly to the left. Next, I move to the blue channel and adjust it by about half as much. Then I select the red channel and pull the point downwards. Now as you can see, the green teal tone we applied to the highlights is affecting the skin tones as well. To reduce the effect, click on the green point and bring the secondary point closer to the white line. Do the same for the blue and the red points. This way, the adjustments will only affect the highlights. This is before and this is after. 
As you can see, small adjustments can have a significant impact on our footage. When we check the other clips, the green tones in the highlights are visible but not overpowering. So this could be our second golden rule. Always keep your adjustments at a minimum level. Let's move to the third note. Here I want to increase the contrast slightly. Again, I'm going to use the curves tool. I adjust the second point on the highlights upwards and pull the first point down slightly. Similarly, I adjust the shadows by pulling the second point down and the first point up. I make these changes knowing they will affect all the clips on my timeline, not just one on my screen. I'm aiming for subtle contrast adjustments that will work across all clips. For this tutorial, I might exaggerate the contrast a bit more so the effect is easier to see. Combined with our previous adjustments, we are making good progress, but there is still more to do. Now let's look at the other tools in the Curves panel. As you can see, there are six more tabs. The first three allow us to adjust Hue and the next three control saturation. I will name this node Hue versus and move on to the Hue versus Hue tab. We can adjust the hue of any specific color here. For instance, if we want to tweak the blues, we can move the point slightly up or down. Let's adjust the red to make them appear slightly more orange. But be careful with the large changes in the red-orange region as it can quickly distort the skin tones. We can move on to the Hue versus Saturation tab. Here we can control the saturation of specific colors. I will just reduce the saturation of the reds a bit. Okay, now I will add another node and call it Saturation versus. With these tools, we focus more on adjusting the intensity of colors. Let's take a look at the saturation versus luminance tab. This tool allows us to control brightness based on saturation, balancing the intensity of colors with their luminance. For example, like this, we can increase the saturation in areas with high brightness. Again, let's keep these adjustments on a subtle level. Now moving on to saturation versus saturation. This tool lets you adjust saturation based on low or high saturation levels. I'm increasing the overall saturation slightly while reducing it a bit in the mid-tones. Lastly, let's look at luminance versus saturation. And this tool allows you to control saturation levels based on the brightness. I will make a slight adjustment here to increase the saturation in the highlighted areas. Okay, by balancing these tools, we can achieve a more refined and cohesive look across different areas of our image. Finally, let's review all our adjustments. This is before and this is after. I'm going to quickly go over and check the other clips and I think the look is very consistent. For example, this is an 8-bit S-Log footage. It seems that it needs some basic lighting adjustments. I've already made those earlier, so let's review it. This is the color corrected version and this is with our developed look applied. It works quite well, I think. So one key point to remember is that it's almost impossible to create a look that works perfectly across all your clips. However, you can use a few notes at the clip level before the CST to adjust your white balance or exposure as needed. As you can see, after a few simple adjustments, our look works seamlessly. Okay, finally, for added aesthetics, you can enhance your footage with different effects. This part is entirely up to you. For instance, you can use a glow effect. Just be sure to fine tune it so it's not too overpowering. Halation is another great option. It's one of my favorite effects. You can also add film grain to give it a little bit of texture. Now let's review all the clips one more time. I'm doing a before and after and I don't actually see any major issues. Let's look at it on a larger screen. We can notice the effects like halation and grain more clearly. In this clip, for example, you can really feel the mood change after applying the effects and color adjustments. Okay guys, once you understand the logic behind the look development in DaVinci Resolve, it becomes a very enjoyable process. By the way, I want to mention that I used these same methods to create my first cinematic LUT pack. The pack consists of four main LUTs, each with Rec. 709, S-Log3 and Arilog C4 variants. If you are interested, you can check it out my Etsy shop. I will put the link in the description. I also plan to create more LUT packs, power grades or film emulations like this. Well, that's it for today's video. Please let me know if you found this tutorial useful. I hope it wasn't too complicated or anything. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.